Okay, excellent. All right, uh, hi everybody, uh, and welcome to this talk on a SOFI based software defined vehicle deployment for autonomous driving. Uh, the work uh, done in this presentation is uh, mainly a collaboration between SOFI and the AutoWare Foundation. Uh, let me start by presenting uh, Christian and myself. Uh, so Christian John is the president at Tier 4 for North America and also the chair of strategic planning committee at the AutoWare Foundation. Uh, and myself, uh, my name is Kasper Ornstein Mecklenburg from ARM and I'm a performance analysis engineer and I lead the Auto, uh, AutoWare Open AD Kit Blueprint in SOFI. So let's start by taking a look at today's agenda. So the agenda today is short and sweet and full of goodies. Um, so I'll start uh, talking about SOFI blueprints and EWOL, uh, and then uh, Christian will take over and talk about AutoWare Foundation, AutoWare, and Open AD Kit. So with no further ado, uh, let's jump into uh, SOFI blueprints. So the SOFI Blueprints uh, is an initiative driven by our members uh, to materialize the concepts behind uh, our vision of uh, how to enable the software-defined vehicle. So this is done by deploying domain-specific applications in a way which levered features, for example, containerization, uh, which SOFI envisions necessary to realize uh, the software-defined vehicle. So an important aspect of a blueprint is for a user to be able to reproduce the blueprint on their end. So this is like information sharing between our members. Uh, and this re then requires well-written and very clear documentation. So a, a user can consume a blueprint as it is, just replicating step by step uh, for inspiration to see what other people are doing, or as a foundation on which to make modifications to suit their needs, making it their own. So here we can see a simplified view uh, of a high level architecture of a blueprint. Um, so starting from the top, we have the domain specific application. Uh, and in this context, domain specific refers to some software which performs a certain task. The domain specific applications are deployed uh, using containers. The applications run on top of a SOFI reference implementation. On a high level, the requirement for reference implementation is that it enables the features which SOFI, the SOFI architecture dictates. So using standards-based firmware uh, creates alignment and allows a user to easily get an operating system up and running on any type of hardware, which follows the firmware standard. An example of uh, a, a so, um, so software standard, uh, sorry, uh, firmware standard uh, is ARM System Ready Program, uh, which is a compliance certification program based on a set of hardware and firmware standards. By enabling uh, Sophie's vision of decoupling the software, uh, possibilities for hardware flexibility arise. For example, at the edge um, is our embedded device, perhaps on a desk or uh, in a car. Using uh, the cloud gives us availability and scalability on demand as we need it uh, to meet compute needs uh, for intense testing. Uh, and one use of virtual hardware is to enable a user to deploy software on hardware that's not available. We all know the difficulty of getting uh, a hold of hardware recently, uh, or also um, uh, hardware that doesn't yet exist in silicon. So the description of a blueprint is intentionally simple and quite generic, uh, as we want to encourage SOFI members to create a blueprint the way they desire. So we don't want to put any unnecessary limitations on it. Uh, and please do visit uh, the website, uh, which is hosted uh, on Sophie's GitLab, uh, to learn more about uh, Blueprints. Uh, you can see the link uh, at the bottom, uh, gitlab.com slash Sophie slash Blueprints. So I hope this gives you a high level understanding of the Sophie Blueprints architecture. Uh, and next, I'll talk a little bit more in detail how we actually have used this architecture for the Blueprint. So AutoWare Open AD Kit Blueprint uh, is the very first blueprint and has been a pipe cleaning exercise for everyone involved. Uh, it's been a bumpy ride uh, and I think we've now landed in a good place. So the Open AD Kit is developed by AutoWare Foundation and wor uh, the work uh, done uh, in the Open AD Kit is done in the Open AD Kit work group. The project aims to bring software-defined best practices into the open source autonomous drive software stack AutoWare, for example, by introducing cloud native development and production methodologies. The open AD kit deployment model for AutoWare 
is a microservices architecture with broad support for the cloud, the edge, and virtual hardware. The AutoWare Open AD Kit Blueprint takes the output application workloads from the Open AD Kit workgroup and deploys it in various ways, showing with practical examples how Sophie, uh, Sophie's vision of software defined vehicles can be materialized. Up in the top right, we have a third party application. Uh, and this could, for example, be a data collecting node or over there updating service. Uh, the workloads are deployed in a Linux environment as containers or in an RTOS environment as needed. The framework provides a user with flexibility. So next, let's go into at the details of the first version of the Blueprint. So this is the very first version, version 1.0 of the AutoWare Open AD Kit Blueprint. There are two different versions being worked on as well, version 1.1 and version 1.2, where changes to the deployment have been made. However, we've kept the containers as is. The blueprint is based on Open AD Kit version 1.0 from the AutoWare Foundation, which was released about a year ago now. Since then, a lot of progress has been made, and Christian will talk more about this topic later on. Uh, Open AD Kit version 1.0 is built on uh, four features from AutoWare map, perception, planning, and vehicle interface. It is running on Ewell on an AVA developer platform. The AVA developer platform and the Linux machine are connected over Ethernet, and the Linux machine uh, is running Arbis, uh, which is our visualization tool, and Scenario Simulator, which is our simulation tool, which then exercises Open AD Kit, so the Open AD Kit software stack. Next, I'll jump into uh, a couple more details on Ewell. So Edge Workload Abstraction and Orchestration Layer, ab abbreviated Ewell, is the Sophie Linux reference implementation. OK, so, so what does this actually then mean? So Ewell has features which enable the way Sophie envisions how software should be deployed. That is, in a containerized and virtualized way. Let's take a look at some of the pieces which make up Ewell. So Docker is a container engine used to run containers. K3S is a lightweight Kubernetes distribution for container orchestration. And Sen is a type 1 hypervisor for hardware virtualization. So Ewell is a custom Linux distribution built using the Octo project and is provided through the open source repository Meta Ewell, which is under the Sophie GitLab umbrella. So if you go into gitlab.com slash Sophie, and then you'll see there's a, a folder there called Ewell, and that's where Meta Ewell is hosted. Uh, Ewell can be built in two different ways, bare metal, meaning that Ewell runs directly on the hardware uh, and application workloads are running containers. Virtualization, meaning that we can deploy virtual machines which run the application workloads in containers. These containerized application workloads are not part of Ewell. You bring your own container. One of the benefits of the Octo project is its layer model development methodology, which is key to customization. And this enables users to take Ewell and modify it to suit their needs. So in this blueprint, we deployed Ewell uh, at the edge on an AVA developer platform. Uh, and Ewell has already been deployed uh, in the cloud and on AWS Graviton instance in other contexts. However, this hasn't been implemented in the blueprint yet. By doing this, uh, it, it gives us a runtime parity in the cloud and at the edge, which is very desirable. And this is thanks to the Yocto project uh, and that hardware vendors agree and uh, implement standards-based firmware. We use the bare metal, version, bare metal version of Ewell, which makes it easy to deploy on the AVA and also in the cloud. We can see on the right that uh, AWS has three different uh, versions, or li I've listed three different versions of the Graviton. Uh, C6G, which is the Neoverse N1 core, which is the same core as the, the AVA developer platform. Um, G5G, which is the Neoverse N1 and also gives us a GPU enabled instance. And then C7G, which is the latest one, which has a Neoverse V1 core, which has um, additional vector uh, capabilities. So it has a bigger, bigger vector engine than the N1. So in the blueprint, we use the AD Lynx AVA developer platform, uh, which has a chip from Amper with the Neoverse N1 CPU. It's uh, like a desktop developer machine with PCIe slots for acceleration. And it's really useful for prototyping. 
I'll now hand over to uh, Christian, who will talk uh, more about the autonomous drive application workload, Ottawa and OpenAD Kit. Over to you, Christian. Thanks, Casper. Next slide. Thanks. Um, so just to start first with an overview of Autoware, um, this is an open source project managed by the Autoware Foundation. It's a complete autonomous driving software stack built on top of ROS2 and openly uh, licensed under the Apache 2.0 framework. Um, it's a very modular architecture. Um, so the, the different components of the autonomy stack, uh, perception, planning, control, well-defined modules, APIs built on ROS too. So it really lends itself very well for a microservices type architecture. Um, there's some useful links here about how to get started with AutoWare and OpenAD Kit. Uh, we lost the slides, Casper. Thanks. Um, going on to the next slide, um, just, just to give you an example of the types of uh, vehicles that AutoWare has been integrated, there's actually hundreds of projects uh, around the world that are already using AutoWare um, in various vehicle configurations, whether it's uh, sort of small form factor mobility as a service shuttles, full-size buses, passenger vehicles, um, the, the flexibility of AutoWare is, is um, you know, the, the modularity, the ability to adapt it and integrate it into different vehicles, the, the ability to modify the, the functionality within the different modules, whether it's perception planning or control for the particular environment that the vehicle is operating in. These are kind of all the strengths of, of uh, the, the AutoWare open source project that have allowed it to be adapted, integrated into so many different vehicle configurations and deployed in, in different operational design domains around the world. Um, so the, uh, you know, the, the focus of the foundation is really to develop this functionality as part of the open source project. And we've uh, implemented various ODDs at a, a level of maturity that uh, lends itself to start towards uh, commercial implementations, such as uh, operating in factory environments, cargo logistics, or uh, shuttle bus type applications on predefined routes or private campuses. These are uh, implementations of AutoWare that the open source project and the foundation have been working on to, uh, to implement in a more robust, uh, well-documented uh, sort of open source uh, release. And we're starting to work on some of the more advanced uh, use cases now that will in the future be implemented in the project around things like passenger vehicles and robo-taxi type uh, uh, operational design domains. And, and that'll be coming in, in the next one to two years. Uh, next slide, please. Um, open AD kits is another uh, aspect of the open source project that we've been working on that brings together several of the alliance partners of the AutoWare Foundation. So uh, AutoWare Foundation, SOFI, eSync, and M M MIH are all part of this project, which we call Open AD Kit. And AutoWare Foundation and MIH are both uh, members of SOFI as well. The basic idea here is that we're taking the AutoWare uh, stack and implementing it on top of the, the SOFI uh, eWall framework. Um, working with eSync, we are integrating their service as another sort of workload application within the framework and using that to do the uh, management and updates of the uh, AutoWare application. And then in the context of MIH, where the, the focus there is to define an open EV platform and, and really define the specifications around the EEA and, and how the AD and ADAS application software interfaces with all of the other uh, components of the vehicle, whether it's the sensors or central gateway control plane, data plane functionality, infotainment system, and so on. All of these APIs are being defined uh, within the MIH work groups. And then 
implemented as part of the AutoWare stack so that companies can start to use the Open80 kit as an out of the box uh, ready solution for implementing against the MIH specifications. Next slide, please. So where we are with the Open80 kit today, um, as Casper mentioned, we've uh, released the 1.0 framework for Open80 kit, where in, in this release, what we've accomplished is we've implemented AutoWare within a, a container on top of eWall, integrated with the eSync OTA agent as another application uh, within the framework. And we've demonstrated uh, ISO level parity between running this framework in the cloud on an AWS Graviton instance and then at the edge on an AVA developer platform. But this is not really yet a real microservices architecture. Um, this is the entire uh, AutoWare application running in one container. So there's still a lot of work to, to do um, to, to get this more towards uh, the, the true vision of what a, a automotive workload looks like as a microservices uh, uh, application in, in Sophie. So next slide. The, the work that we're doing forward now, uh, going forward now is really looking at how do we take this uh, implementation of AutoWare, take these modules, uh, which as I said, are really uh, already kind of set up well in, in a ROS2 uh, uh, microservices type architecture, partition those into separate containers and, and then implement that on top of the eWall framework also bringing in the, the capabilities that are coming in the, in the releases of SOFI in the next year around uh, hypervisor and hardware abstraction layers so that we can build on top of heterogeneous compute platforms where there will be safety islands where uh, a safety capable MCU is integrated with high compute solutions such as GPU, CPU, uh, dedicated acceleration logic for things like the perception and localization uh, functionality and making this all part of the open AD kit framework. And, and you'll see more from the AutoWare Foundation on our plans to, to implement this on top of SOFI in, in the coming months. Next slide, please. Another important aspect of, of this open AD kit framework is, of course, the cloud native uh, development. So um, providing the capabilities to work with this architecture and do the, the development and verification of the application in the cloud. So what the foundation is also looking at is all of the different tools and capabilities required uh, to uh, collect data from a vehicle, uh, upload that to the cloud, do all of the ML ops, dev ops on the, the data as far as annotation tools, uh, development of all the different uh, simulation scenarios that have to be run to validate the uh, the application stack and the different functions within the stack, and then providing the different simulation tools that can be used, whether it's in the cloud or um, also on on a test bench to to do hardware in the loop simulation. So things like scenario simulators, sensor simulator suites, end to end simulators for the complete stack, and so forth. And then once the uh, validation has been done in the cloud, providing the OTA capability through things like adding in the eSync client service uh, to do the updates to the vehicle and then uh, start this whole process again of collecting more data and uploading it and, and uh, validating the, the new functionality that gets developed. So I hope that gives you a pretty uh, good idea of uh, AutoWare and, and the work that we're doing in the foundation around Open AD Kit, and uh, hand it back to you, Robert. Okay, thanks, CJ and Casper. Um, as Casper said, this is the first uh, blueprint, and we we believe this is going to be really useful for people kind of getting involved with Sophie and being able to get to use Sophie. 